What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Here behind me, we got the Type R FL5 and today's episode, we're gonna do the first major modification on this car. It may not be too big, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna install some wheel spacers on the FL5 Type R. So the reason for that is because the wheel fitment that comes from the factory, the wheels and tires are pushed way too much on the inside and I don't like that look. And I really wanna stick with the OEM wheels and tires so we're going to push those wheels a little bit further out so basically they're flush with the outside fenders. So I'm going to show you guys how to install some wheel spacers on the FL5 Type R. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install some wheel spacers on the FL5. All right, here's what we're going to be installing today. These are the Bonos. I don't know how to pronounce that. Bonos, Bonos, but let's just call it Bonos for the time being. Bonos wheel spacers. So I went with... 20 millimeter and 25 millimeter. So why I did two different depths is because I took some measurements on the FL5 and it turns out that the rear wheels are actually recessed more into the wheel well as compared to the fronts. So I think it's off by about one eighth of an inch. So let me go ahead and show you guys the measurements of what these wheel spacers are. So wheel spacers on the right hand side are 20 and the ones on the left hand side are 25. Okay, so the measuring tape might be a little tough to see right here, but the right hand side 20 millimeter spacers are just past three quarters of an inch. And then on the left hand side, the 25 millimeter, it is just one hair shy of a full inch, so 15 sixteenths. So I just want to go ahead and give you a better illustration of the size comparison of the 25 versus 20 millimeter. Uh, taking a look at the wheel spacers, it looks like you got a textured side right here. And they actually advertise some cooling ducts. So take a look at the back side. Okay, so take a look at the back side of the wheel spacers. These little notches right here, they advertise these things as cooling ducts. And they got these little notches right here. So they basically indicate those as easy removal pockets in case you have to take a flathead screwdriver and pry these off. But I don't think that's gonna be the situation. Uh, anyhow, these things are really robust, seem to be well made. And take a look at the back bolts right here. You can see it says 12.9. So these basically are 12.9 high strength bolts. Can't remember what the factory is, it's like a 10 point something, but I guess that's one of their strengths of advertising. So these are very strong bolts right here compared to the OEM wheel studs. And the most important thing about wheel spacers in general is you wanna go ahead and make sure it has two features. So right here, this is hub centric. So this opening right here is going to fit perfectly on the wheel hub and on the front side. And over here on the front side, these are wheel centric spacers as well. So this little notch right here is going to fit perfectly on the inside barrel of the wheel, creating a tight fit. And these studs right here is what will be securing the wheel to the actual car itself or the wheel spacer. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the detail in there, but you got some recessed holes. It's not basically just a straight hole. And of course, it comes with five bolts per spacer, which these bolts will secure these wheel spacers to the hub itself. Okay, enough conversation about talking about the Bonos wheel spacers. Let's go ahead and start the installation process on the FL5 Type R. Okay, Civic Type R FL5 in stock form. Let me show you guys how the OEM wheels and tires are situated in a stock format. So as you can see right here in the rear, tires are sunk into the wheel well quite a bit. I'm not after that look. So basically my goal is after I install these wheel spacers is basically have the tires and wheels flush with the top of this fender right there. So kind of gives you a better idea of how these things are situated. So let me show you the fronts. Okay, quick view of the front 19s on the FL5 Type R. As you can see, these wheels and tires actually stick out approximately eighth inch further out than the back does. So that's my reason why I went with 25 millimeter in the rear and 20 millimeter on the front because I don't want the fronts poking out a little bit more than the rears because a lot of people just do 15 and 15 or 20 and 20. So after doing numerous hours of spacer fitment on FL5 Type R's, I think that 20 millimeter on the front and 25 millimeter on the back is basically the perfect fitment that I'm after. So, all right, so enough talking. Let's go ahead and get the jack, raise up the car, and then we'll pull off each wheel and tire, and I'll show you the next step of the process. Thank you. 
Okay, driver's side rear wheel and tire removed from the FL5 Type R. So let me go ahead and show you guys what's going on here. So this is the 25 millimeter wheel spacer from Bonos. And I went ahead and took off the nuts and the rubber caps. So basically this is how you'll be receiving them when you get the shipment. So basically just pop off these rubber caps, remove these nuts right here, and this is what you're left with. So we need to go ahead and do two test fitments before we go ahead and mount these on the car. So while we've got the wheel and tire right here, I've got safely propped up against the spare tire. So let's go ahead and test the new Bonos wheel spacer inside the wheel. Obviously the studs are gonna be going through the hole openings. Okay, so that's basically a perfect fitment. There's gonna be a little bit of slack right there. So whenever the lug nuts tighten themselves up, basically they'll center it perfectly. But obviously you've got the wheel centric opening right here that fits perfectly in this OEM wheel. Okay, so now we know it fits perfectly inside the wheel. Let's go and test it against the hub. Okay, so here is the hub, and basically this is the mating surface of where this thing will be butted up against. So if you've got an older car and you got a lot of rust buildup, I probably recommend to go ahead and clean that off with a wire brush, maybe put some anti-seize on there. So let's go ahead and test out our Bonos wheel spacer and see how it fits. So go ahead and put the factory wheel studs through the holes. And there we go. Got just a little play right there, left and right but those nuts will snug it up perfectly once we torque everything in spec. So now we know everything fits perfectly. So let's go ahead and mount the wheel spacer to the hub itself. And we're gonna use the supplied nuts. But before we do so, we need to go ahead and put some thread lock on these OEM studs right here, just a little bit, you know, better safe than sorry. And then once we have everything tightened up, we'll torque it in a crisscross pattern. And then we should be good to go to mount the factory wheel and tire back onto the Bonos 25 millimeter wheel spacer. All right guys, the first wheel spacer on the driver's side rear is successfully mounted. So what I did is I went ahead and took some thread lock and this is the blue removable kind right there. You don't wanna use permanent. And I went ahead and applied maybe like a quarter inch bead on each thread close to the hub right there. And then once you have that done, you can go ahead and carefully slip on the wheel spacer, get the supplied nuts, hand tighten them in position. And then I went ahead and took my torque wrench set that to 94 foot pounds and torqued all the nuts in a crisscross pattern and i did one final torque sequence just to make sure everything is kosher so safety first just make sure you take your time doing this because this can be a safety issue if you install these things wrong all right let's go ahead and put the oem wheel and tire back in position torque the lug nuts to spec and then we'll go ahead and take the jack away and see if we can tell a difference i'm really looking forward to this let's go ahead and do this All right, reporting back after the rainstorm, let's go ahead and take a look at the driver's side rear 25 millimeter spacer. Now, I was concerned that I went too far out, but I went ahead and took some measurements. So what I did is I basically held the level against the tire edge right here, and then made sure it was level, and then took a tape measure from this top fender over to a level, and I'm about 3 eighths of an inch. So I went ahead and mocked up the passenger side front so let me show you what's going on with that 
Okay, so the passenger side front is mocked up. I didn't put any thread lock on there or torque anything to spec, but I just wanted to see what the fitment looks like on the front. But so far, I'm very happy with that. So let me go ahead and show you the view from the front side. All right, so here's a quick view from the front side. And just to give you an idea of the poke amount or how much flush it is. So if you're looking at it dead straight from the side, you can barely see the rubber just protruding out just slightly. So I think that's a great fitment right there. So overall, I think I'm gonna stick with the 20 millimeter up front and the 25 millimeter back in the rear. So let's go ahead and finish up the installation of these wheel spacers and we'll show you guys the final results. All right, I know I'm gonna get asked a lot of questions as to why I put wheel spacers on the Honda Civic Type R FL5, and the main reason is appearance. I think pushing the wheels and tires out flush to the outside fender absolutely looks phenomenal. Now, I know the right way in order to do this is actually get lower offset custom wheels and tires, and the main reason I'm not doing that right now is because number one, I like the FL5 Type R wheels and tires with its unique triangular design and the matte finish. And there are some nice 19s right there, as opposed to the FK8, which are 20 inch wheels, too large in my opinion. And number two, you're looking at $2,500 to maybe $4,000 for a nice set of rims. And you know, I just can't justify spending that kind of money on this car right now. I'd rather get this car paid off. I guess that's my fiscally responsible method in my brain, you know, to get this car paid off, as opposed to spending thousands of dollars on a nice set of rims and tires. But you never know what's gonna happen in the future. I might be eating my words, but I do have some wheels and tires in the back of my mind of what I like to put on this car, but you just never know what the future has in store. Now, some people might say that it's gonna throw off the handling characteristics. I haven't noticed that, but then again, this car is not gonna see the track. If I did track this car, I have to notify my insurance and actually pay a special amount. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna be driving this thing on the street and enjoying it for what it is. Now, the proper way to do this is you want lower offset wheels and tires. So the factory offset on these wheels and tires is a plus 60. So if you wanna have a nice, more aggressive look, maybe a plus 45, plus 40, maybe a plus 35, some of that range. But personally, I wouldn't go past a plus 35 you know, once you go to 30 or 22, those wheels and tires are going to be protruding out way too much for the fender. Anyhow, I think these wheel spacers are going to work just fine for the time being, you know, getting the proper fitment. And there we have it. Some 20 and 25 millimeter wheel spacers on the FL5 Civic Type R. And let me tell you, this car looks absolutely incredible right now. Now wheel spacers, they may not be for everyone, but for those that are not tracking the car and they're basically just sticking to the street, I think they're fine. And just a word of caution, if you're gonna use wheel spacers in your car, whether it's an FL5 Type R or whatever car it might be, just make sure that you use a quality product and use proper methods for installing these things such as torquing the spec and using some thread lock just in case because after all, you know, wheel spacers are right between the hub and the wheel and they're basically holding your wheels and tires to the car itself. And you just don't want to skimp on that type of system right there. Okay, the next step of the process, we need to go ahead and lower down the FL5 Type R. Basically from the factory, we got so much wheel gap, basically the space between the top of the fender and the tire itself. You know, it's ridiculously high. It looks like a four by four. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate that. So I hope you guys can stay tuned on the process of lowering the FL5 Type R. 
Anyhow, we got a lot more planned in addition to lowering the FL5 Type R, and I hope you guys can stay tuned. And if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.